Hey guys, it's your girl Ian, and you're watching Sunkissed Somewhere. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're an old subscriber, welcome back. My name is Aeen Bernos and I do videos on travel, lifestyle, and confidence every Monday at 6 p.m. For today's episode, I keep switching between episode and video because I get co so confused from recording my podcast, which is on Spotify, by the way, and filming a YouTube video. But anyway, so I'm sorry. For today's video, I will be putting on my teacher hat. For those of you who don't know this already, I am an English graduate, an English major. I have a degree in English language studies. And last year I was in Spain as an English teacher. So I kind of know what I'm talking about, I believe. But before I start with this video, I want to put a little disclaimer out there. This is not a video that will be tackling grammar or your accent or your typical mistakes when speaking the English language. Those things are very technical and they would take so much more time to cover. However, for this video, we will be focusing on helping you guys become more confident in speaking English. I'll be sharing some exercises that will help you maybe gain a little more fluency and also tips from your friendly neighborhood English as a second language speaker, me. I speak Tagalog as my mother tongue. That That is my first language. And English is actually something that I learned in school and I ended up practicing it. I ended up honing it. I think... I have some good tips that I can share with you so that the next time you feel intimidated by the language, then you can be more prepared and you can feel more confident because at the end of the day, English is just a tool. It's just like your mother tongue. You don't have to feel like it is a symbol of your status or a symbol of your intelligence. So this is just another tool to communicate. So that's what I want to emphasize and that's what I want to help you with today. So shall we begin? We shall. All right. So the first tip that I have is to use English and to use it often. A lot of the time I speak by myself whenever I'm in the shower or I'm driving in my car or just before I go to sleep. I actually pretend that I'm giving speeches or I'm giving a talk or a workshop. And I've been doing that ever since I was a kid. I, I, <laughs> I can vaguely remember pretending that I have won an Oscar and giving my own speech in English. And I've been doing that ever since. And I guess because I do vlog a lot and I speak in English a lot, it's gotten better over time. So that has definitely helped me feel more comfortable with the language, therefore allowing me to have this more natural flow, I would say. Another thing is to practice conversations in English. For example, you could pretend that you're going to the grocery store in the States or in London. <laughs> Allowing yourself to have those conversations in English allows us to feel more casual towards the language as opposed to treating it as something that you only use in school or for reporting or for something a little more official. My second tip is to practice with existing materials. So so it could be books or movies. What you can do is to open your book up and then read out loud as if you're reading to a group of kids. That will help you familiarize yourself with the language, but also the structure. Because sometimes when we are creating our own content, when we are creating our own scripts, we don't get to challenge ourselves to understand new words or get to know other meanings of that word. So having an existing material to guide you will be even better, especially if you want to focus on pronunciation and just this. <laughs> Tip number three is to, of course, observe yourself. Now, when you observe yourself, I don't just mean go in front of a mirror and talk for hours. I mean, record yourself. I believe that one of the biggest contributors to my progress in speaking in English was vlogging. If you go to my very first video, I spoke very slowly and I would cringe every time I saw myself because I just felt so uncomfortable. I 
thought at that time that I was already fluent in English. And I guess to a certain degree, I was. But I just wasn't very conversational, maybe, or casual or fluent. I don't know. But I definitely have seen the difference between then and now and if you have those documentations of how you speak you get to pick out some of the nuances in how you speak and the little details that differ you from native english speakers and maybe if you can pick those out you can improve as well and feel more confident with how you speak but again like i said a while ago there is nothing wrong with your variety of english if you speak filipino english philippine english or if you speak singaporean english malaysian english that's completely fine and that's good but this is only to allow you to be more confident tip number four is to read and to read a lot now this is especially important if you want to get to understand the structure better because for example my mother tongue is tagalog and there are some things in tagalog that isn't necessarily true in english for example in Tagalog, our pronouns have no gender. That means that when I switch to English, sometimes I would get confused between he or she, especially when I was just starting out. So now when you read, you get to familiarize yourself with the elements of this new language that is unfamiliar to you. Also, obviously, it helps you with your vocabulary. It gives you new words that you otherwise would never encounter in simple conversations. So this is a really good way to enrich your knowledge of the language, therefore allowing you more confidence to go out there and just speak it because you have enough of an arsenal to 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 express your thoughts number five is to watch tv shows watch films listen to podcasts in english and this is important because sometimes as academic learners of the language we tend to only learn the literal meanings of things as opposed to the slang and the figures of speech and this will definitely bridge the gap between an ESL learner and a native English speaker. Tip number six is to practice pronunciation, especially with words that are confusing and are very similar. And of course, new vocabulary. So when I talk about confusing words, these are simple words like filler, peeler, sat, sad. Now, these are similar words in a sense, and especially to ESL learners, sometimes this feels very confusing because we're like, what's the difference between sat and sad? And it's very, very small when you think about it. But this is why I advise you guys to exaggerate a little bit so you understand the difference. When we do it ourselves, which is what I'm doing now, which is why I'm talking so slowly, <laughs> you get better at it when you exaggerate and you practice over time. Another example is van and ban. Sometimes we Filipinos tend to mistake V for B and F for P. So we can practice that a little bit and get better at it. So that when we speak English or in such an occasion where we have to speak in straight English, we won't get as confused. Another exercise that you can try at home. So now let's move on to my personal tips on how to feel more confident when speaking in English. The first one is to use every opportunity to speak and to practice. I remember when I was growing up, every time I had to say something in English, I would feel anxious and I would get nervous because I wouldn't know for sure if I was saying something right, correctly. I would always edit in my mind. I don't know if you guys have experienced that, but I was that person. I would always overthink, like, is my structure correct? If I say this, will I make sense? But just grab that opportunity to practice because if you don't allow yourself to actually use the language and actually say things out loud, then you won't get comfortable with it. And at the end of the day, you know, 
your technicalities, your grammar, your pronunciation, those are things that you can just practice at home. You can get better at it by learning, by studying. But getting comfortable with the language is actually using every opportunity to speak. So in order to get rid of that insecurity or discomfort, just practice. Just raise your hand, talk, start a conversation. Tip number two is to focus on your own progress. As with anything, I feel like our nature as human beings, we tend to compare our progress with other people all the time. We would always think, oh, I don't speak like her. I don't sound like whoever's on Netflix right now, or I don't sound like a radio DJ. But the thing is, if we keep comparing ourselves with others' progress, then we rob ourselves of the opportunity to actually get better. And so while it feels so intuitive to just stop and focus on what we lack as speakers, just look at yourself and see how you can grow. Again, English is a skill. That means you can get better at it. That means that you can practice it. My last tip or reminder is to simply remember that English is just a tool for communication. You're already bilingual. If you're watching this, then that means you have another mother tongue. And I bet that you are very comfortable with your mother tongue and you speak fluently in your mother tongue you can hold conversations in your mother tongue just being bilingual is already a gift and it's already a skill it's already it's a really really good thing if there's anything that I learned throughout my journey in learning and teaching English it's that bilingual communicators bilingual speakers actually have so much talent just to be able to pick up this this new language and use it despite the challenges. And I, I guess I just wanted to remind you guys that English is not something to feel intimidated by or English is not something that we should feel uncomfortable with. So the next time you want to apologize for not being able to speak English or saying in front of your presentation or in front of your peers that oh sorry i'm not a very good english speaker forgive me or please bear with me instead of apologizing for any of those mistakes just think of english as a tool it's just a tool that will help you get things done communicate better but other than that that's it no need to be worried so anyway, that is it for my video for today. I hope that helped you guys. If you have any questions that I can help you with, you can DM me on Instagram at Ayin Bernos or you can leave a comment below and maybe I could answer that. If you guys want to hear more from me, I also have a podcast on Spotify. It's called Camp Confidence and I host it with Riza Lana Sebastian of Lana.ph. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Don't forget to stay confident. Bye! Hey, no, 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 no.